Hey men, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I make videos for men on how they can evolve physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually so they can become the integral alpha. Today's video is really, really important. I would say it's probably the most important video that I've made thus far and maybe the most important video that I'll ever make. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of the negative impact that pornography has on men. It's terrible for your motivation. It's addictive. It makes you a fucking weirdo. There's tons of reasons to give up pornography, and that's not necessarily what I'm gonna talk about in this video. What I'm here to talk about today is the impact that orgasms have on men in general. That means whether you're in relationship with a long-term partner or hooking up with women on Tinder or just masturbating like a coomer, doesn't really matter. My goal with this video is to share a little bit of what happens in your brain when you have an orgasm. And it doesn't matter who or what you have the orgasm with, but the actual effect neurochemically that happens in your brain every time that you come. This information is super crucial if you wish to thrive as a masculine being in the world, if you wish to become the ubermensch or the superman in your life, as Nietzsche would say, if you really want to take your life to the next level and not just survive, but really thrive, you have to understand the power of your sexual energy. You have to understand that leaking your sexual energy every day or multiple times a day, even if it's with a partner, is depleting you. It's going to make your life miserable. It's going to make life much harder for you. So without further ado, let's dive in so I can show you exactly what happens and why orgasms can potentially ruin your life. This graph highlights the profound effect that a single orgasm has on our brain chemistry. It shows that orgasms cause disequilibrium of our dopamine, prolactin, and oxytocin levels, key neurotransmitters that affect our mental health, motivation, success, attractiveness, and even physicality. A single orgasm can negatively disrupt our brain chemistry for over two weeks. In this video, I'm going to explain the science in detail as to why frequent orgasms are the most destructive and dangerous event to male health. Human beings were not meant to be exposed to the amount of stimulation we receive in modern times. Our brain developed over millions of years to meet specific conditions which did not include 24-7 access to pornography, social media, Netflix, advertisements, and YouTube videos. Our brains are tuned for wanting more than liking, which means we are often susceptible to wanting more than we can actually enjoy. This is why people get addicted to food, drugs, pornography, and yes, even orgasms. Dopamine is the wanting neurotransmitter. It is the chemical that motivated us to find food and build shelters in hunter-gatherer times. Now, it is the one that drives our seeking for pleasure to no end. Hyper-stimulating novel experiences cause our dopamine levels to surge, and our rational brain is completely overridden. Good decision making is thrown out the window. Because we are not getting enough of the other rewards our brain finds satisfying, we overindulge. This is how we end up drinking more than we should, or why we have 35 Pornhub tabs open on our browser even though we've already jerked off 5 times that day. With the constant fluctuation of our dopamine levels due to incessant pleasure seeking, we lose the possibility to enjoy the satisfaction of simple things. Bonding with friends, enjoying nature, accomplishing a major project, or enjoying a simple meal. Our entire life spirals down into this addictive cycle of searching for the next hit. Orgasms are one of the fastest and most reliable ways to get a hit of dopamine, which keeps us stuck on the hedonic treadmill, obsessing over how we can get off next and destroys the possibility of truly enjoying life. So what actually happens in our brain when we orgasm? To understand this, we must first look at the brain's reward circuit. This is a neural structure responsible for motivation, desire, craving, and associative learning. It's all linked to how we respond to and connect stimuli. Essentially, it dictates why the hell we do anything at all. One of the key components in this circuit is called the ventral tegmental area, or VTA. The VTA responds to stimuli and cues that indicate a reward is present. When the VTA experiences novel stimuli such as orgasm, it floods our entire brain with dopamine, affecting our motivation, our emotions, and our executive functions. It especially affects the nucleus accumbens, which encodes the memory of the stimuli, so we seek to experience it again in the future. 
By constantly flooding our brain with dopamine through orgasm, our dopamine receptors can actually be overwhelmed and damaged. Our brain protects damage by reducing the amount of dopamine receptors, which reduces our overall sensitivity to dopamine, meaning we need more novelty and frequency to get the same high. This is why drug addicts must continually up their dose in order to keep getting stoned. In fact, scientists have scanned the brains of men ejaculating and commented the scans resemble brain scans of people shooting heroin. Dopamine surges leading up to orgasm because it's the desire chemical. But as soon as we come, our dopamine levels drop right off. We then turn around to seek the next hit, jumping right back on the roller coaster, throwing our neurochemistry out of balance yet again. The fluctuations of our dopamine through orgasm and two-week recovery period leads to massive impacts in the rest of our life. Here is a chart that lists some of the effects of both low and high dopamine levels. The most insidious part is, whether your dopamine is high or low, the result is addictive behavior. When your dopamine is high, you'll do anything to reach the goal of orgasm. If your dopamine is low, you fall prey to anything that will raise it again, such as jerking off to porn or having sex. In 2014, scientists discovered that the orgasm hangover, which results in the shrinking of dopamine producing cells, lasts for at least two weeks. During this time, another hormone called prolactin rises considerably. Prolactin is a dopamine inhibitor and is meant to curtail our sex drive. It is what has us feeling sexually satiated and is why men pass out right after sex. It also appears to be closely related to our stress response. In other words, it's associated with long-term anxiety and despair. Excess prolactin in men causes low libido, headaches, erectile dysfunction, and anxiety. Not only does excessive prolactin have a host of negative consequences, but it also reduces testosterone levels. Interestingly, testosterone increases dopamine levels in the reward circuitry. So essentially, we're hit with three negative consequences. Dopamine receptors are downregulated because of the excess dopamine, prolactin rises, which is a dopamine inhibitor, and finally, testosterone, which is a dopamine booster, is lowered. When the levels of testosterone were sampled in men following orgasm, it was shown that it took at least seven days for testosterone to begin to return to normal levels. Long-term abstaining from orgasm actually elevates men's testosterone overall. This is why you hear so many amazing anecdotal benefits from men who participate in semen retention and NoFap. Reddit communities are littered with tales of men completely turning their life around after giving up porn and masturbation, and more importantly, giving up orgasm. They are literally rewiring their brains to lift depression, destroy anxiety, become more confident, more focused, clear brain fog, make better decisions, and overall become a more powerful man. It also explains why men are facing mental illness at an increasingly alarming rate. Depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts are at epidemic proportions for men, especially when our culture promotes 24-7 pleasure-seeking through free porn, hookup apps, sugar-laced foods, social media, and the whole gamut of distractions that literally hijack our brain and have us foaming at the mouth like a bunch of fucking coomers bowing down to e-girls and the corporate gods who sell us our own misery. Us men are lost at sea in the superficial. We have mutated the reward circuit in our brains so deeply that we are no longer able to even enjoy the simple delight of being alive. Biologist Robert Sapolsky remarked, Unnaturally strong explosions of synthetic experience and sensation and pleasure evoke unnaturally strong degrees of habituation. This has two consequences. First, soon we barely notice the fleeting whispers of pleasure caused by leaves in autumn, or by the lingering glance of the right person, or by the promise of reward following a difficult, worthy task. And the other consequence is that we eventually habituate to even those artificial deluges of intensity. If we were designed by engineers, as we consumed more, we'd desire less. But our frequent human tragedy is that the more we consume, the hungrier we get. More and faster and stronger. What was unexpected pleasure yesterday is what we feel entitled to today and what won't be enough tomorrow. This is the plight of the modern man, and orgasm is the deepest and most insidious addiction. With frequent orgasm, we become more sensitive to the addictive properties of other stimulants, such as alcohol, drugs, sugar, gambling, and so forth. 
Mystics and sages throughout time knew how powerful the consequences of orgasms were. In fact, Tibetan Buddhists called the orgasm the killing of the inner Buddha. Taoists equated one drop of semen with the loss of a hundred drops of blood. Men were taught sexual kung fu to refine their sexual energy. Hindu tantric practitioners accumulated subtle nervous system forces called ojas, which they said were wasted as soon as orgasm was reached. Celibacy has been practiced by thousands of spiritual seekers, gurus, sages, and shamans as a way to reach higher levels of development. Famous athletes have touted the benefits of withholding orgasm before major games or fights. It's purported that Nikola Tesla let go of sex and orgasm entirely to conserve his energy for creating his amazing technologies. So what's a man to do? Well, thankfully, our brain is plastic. We have the ability to mold and shape our brain throughout our lives by constructing new neural pathways. We have the ability to consciously create new behaviors. Each fact, memory, and experience is an opportunity to alter the structure and functioning of our brain. Addiction is merely learning, a series of reinforced pathways due to behaviors and cues that light up our reward circuit. This means that recovery is merely learning too. By becoming aware of how destructive orgasms can be to your mental health, relationships, and brain, you have taken the first step in rebalancing your hormones and becoming the man you're capable of being. Now, I'm not saying that you should never orgasm again. That's not at all what I'm sharing with you. But what I'm saying is build the awareness in your mind. Understand your body. Understand the effects of what happens when you orgasm frequently so you can actually be empowered to make a more powerful choice in the moment if that's something you choose to do. My experience with this is 15, 30, 45 days without any ejaculation, even in relationship, will absolutely transform your life. I'm not going to list all the benefits of semen retention here. I'll make that in another video. But I promise you, go without ejaculating for 15 days. Your life is going to change dramatically. You're going to feel like a brand new man. In my next video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can master your sexual energy so you can still have sex with your partner. You can still be in the world without constantly focusing on orgasm, without ejaculating, so you can actually get over that 15 day hump and really start to balance your neurochemistry and live the life that you want to live, become the man that you want to become. So as always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, share it with your buddies, anybody that could use this. It's really, really crucial that we get this message out and it helps me create more content. So let me know what you wanna see. Let me know what you're going through on this journey. And as always, stay integral.